Welcome, Motenta people. Whether you love Catwoman's character or Snow White with black hair, the inspiration behind them is the beautiful Hedy Lamarr. She changed Hollywood's image, but she was doing something else at night during the Second World War, which was much more significant. What was that? Let's find out. Hedy Lamarr, inventor, wartime codebreaker, and the mother of Wi-Fi? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you're new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Motentus channel. Hedy Lamarr's Beautiful Brilliance From On-Screen Siren to Off-Screen Inventor Hedy Lamarr was often quoted as saying, Any girl can be glamorous. All you have to do is stand still and look stupid. What does that statement really mean? Basically, the legendary actress Hedy Lamarr posed the question of gender norms, beauty standards, and Hollywood artifice in these two brief phrases while employing a tinge of humor to make an important social statement. In some ways, this brief soundbite provides more context for Lamar's life and legacy than any headshot or publicity shot ever could. But knowing the context of the movie star's words gives even more meaning to the groundbreaking achievements and unexpected influence she continues to have. After understanding the context of her famous statement, you might have concluded that she wasn't stupid at all. She was far from that word. To know who she really was, keep watching this video till the end. So, to an integrated Jewish family, Lamar was born Hedwig Keisler in Vienna, Austria, in 1914. In Hedy's Folly, Rhodes explores the factors that would influence Lamar and paints an enthralling image of the artistic, educated Vienna of her youth. Emil Lamar, a prominent banker, adored and raised his darling daughter, while Lamar's cultured mother worried that her exceptionally attractive, intelligent, and fearless only child would become spoiled. According to Lamar, he made me understand that I had to make my own decisions, shape my own character, and think about my own views. She developed an early interest in the arts of performance, but she also looked fascinated by science and engineering. When Lamar was a teenager, she was already gaining attention for her extraordinary physical beauty, which would both help her and maybe impede her success. She was already studying mechanics, had developed into a bold self-promoter, and was Max Reinhardt's protege. Lamar made her cinematic debut at the age of 17 in a German film. She kept performing in European plays, and in 1932, she was cast in the scandalous for the time movie, Ecstasy. Author and UCLA media studies instructor Vincent Brook writes in an email, She was too gorgeous for her own good. She was prevented from being recognized for the smart, multifaceted person that she was by her glamour queen, sex goddess character there were some scandalous scenes in the film. So the movie was considered to be legally indecent by American tastemakers, and it was thus prohibited in the country for a while. What was the actual reason behind its ban? Well, the nude swimming scene, which you have no doubt heard so much about, or the sequence of the fanny twinkling through the woods, was not the main concern. Then what was the main reason? Lamar answered it in her autobiography. It was the close-ups of her face in that cabin sequence where the camera records the reactions of a love-starved bride that caused the most controversy. But the most upsetting thing was her claims that ecstasy director Gustav Macheti used brutal techniques to obtain the natural performance. She reported he stabbed her with a pen to get her facial expressions. Her first marriage took place in 1933 when she married munitions manufacturer Fritz Mandel. She was so inspired by his brilliance. I don't think there was anything he didn't know. Ask him for a chemistry formula, and he'd give it to you, she once said. But sadly, there was a lot of drama in the marriage. There is no doubt that her much older husband dominated her life, refusing to allow her to act. She soon found that life with him was little more than a prison, a gilded cage. All of Lamar's biographers agree that he was jealous of her beauty and infamy. His anger and embarrassment at Lamar's performance and ecstasy resulted in him spending a large amount of money in an attempt to buy up all existing copies of the movie, but he failed to do so. However, the situation was not entirely hopeless for Lamar. She wasn't the stereotypical trophy wife. When she presided over grand dinners at Starenberg's house, Lamar listened carefully to talk about the German military's technological advances. Yes, she escaped her toxic ex-husband, 
Then she went to Paris, and then to London, and soon signed with Louis B. Mayer. Soon after, she was a household name, thanks to her first American film, Algiers. From the early 1930s to the late 1950s, she starred in 25 movies, including Comrade X and Boomtown with Clark Gable, Tortilla Flat with Spencer Tracy and John Garfield, and Samson and Delilah with Victor Mature, her biggest commercial hit. Regardless of what critics or the public thought about her acting or notoriety, her beauty was universally acclaimed. The face has been my misfortune, she wrote in her 1966 autobiography, Ecstasy and Me. It's brought me six failed marriages. Throughout the past five decades, my face has drawn all the wrong people into my life and brought me tragedy and heartache. It's a mask I'll never be able to take off. I curse it. It's not surprising that she was unimpressed with roles in which all she was expected to do was look pretty. However, she was much more than just a pretty face. Upon her christening in 1940, Hedy Lamarr had already gained fame as a bona fide movie star. Disdainful of the Hollywood social scene, she preferred to spend her time with her best friend, Anne Southern, painting or swimming. Yet very little is known about Lamarr's true passion, her inventions. There was something so different about Hetty that the rest of the Hollywood world didn't understand. Drinking wasn't her thing. It wasn't her style to party. In Hetty's world, a good evening is a quiet dinner party where she can discuss ideas with some intelligent friends. It sounds so un-Hollywood, but Hetty had to find something else to occupy her time. Her house was equipped with a drafting table, and she started experimenting. A room in her house was dedicated to tinkering, inventing, and just figuring things out. One of her projects was an improved stoplight and a tablet that made Coca-Cola-style soda when dissolved in water. Afterward, she laughed and said, Well, it never really worked. It probably tasted like Alka-Seltzer, which is exactly what it was. But she's always thinking, Well, how can that be improved? In her words, all creative people want to do the unexpected. Her son, Anthony Loader, later told the Los Angeles Times that his mom was very smart. It was like she always had a solution. It didn't matter what someone complained about. Her mind always found a solution. The same article mentions that while Lamar was dating Howard Hughes, she worked on plans to streamline his airplanes. He asked Lamar for advice on aviation design and theory while touring airplane factories along with her. Yet, it wasn't until 1942 that Lamar's innovative thinking led to an unprecedented invention. Working with composer George Antile, Lamar invented an electronic device that minimized radio jamming. As to why she wanted to help the U.S. military during World War II, she said that she was trying to help her mother trapped in Europe. According to Antile, it was Lamar's design. Their radio guidance transmitter and torpedo's receiver moved simultaneously, so the enemy couldn't find or block a message before it had moved to another frequency. Frequency hopping became the term for this approach. In Bombshell, Lamar affirms that inventions are easy for her. I don't have to work on them. Ideas come to me naturally. There was one thing that didn't come naturally to Lamar, though, and that was the notoriety and compensation she deserved for the ideas she came up with. After Lamar and Antile introduced their invention to the U.S. Navy, the engineers rejected it outright. According to them, it was too bulky and couldn't be used for military purposes. In reality, what they were trying to say is that it's not possible for an actress and a musician to develop a novel technology that could be used by them in this situation. The truth is that it was ahead of its time, and some have concluded that it might have allowed the war to be shortened by a year or more. On top of that, it was the size of a watch face. When lightweight transistors became available in the mid-1950s, the Navy shared Lamar's concept with a contractor assigned to create a sonobuoy, a device that could be dropped from an airplane into the water to detect submarines. As the years went on, other contractors and companies used Lamar's design as a springboard to come up with even bigger ideas. Despite the fact that the patent owned by Lamar and Antile did not expire until 1959, they never received compensation for the use of the concept they developed. A frequency hopping system was used to guide the torpedoes among U.S. ships on a blockade line around Cuba during the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962. While the technology was not used during wartime, it later proved to be extremely useful. 
This technology helped to lay the foundation for cellular technology, Wi-Fi, and the modern satellite system that we use today. The actress was aware of these uses of her work, and she was bitter about the fact that she had not been given any recognition or awards for her contributions, nor even a penny for them. In a 1990 Forbes interview, she stated, I don't understand why there was no acknowledgement when it was used all over the world. This statement slowly began to change the world's perception of her achievements. Although Lamar was not able to receive critical acclaim or recognition for her technical abilities, she continued to have success in the movie business. But the career of the star took a turn for the worse in the 1950s, followed by a period of strife in her personal life as she married six times, was arrested twice, and suffered from a wide range of addictions. Later in her life, Lamar moved to the state of Florida. Eventually, Lamar became a recluse due to her inability to cope with aging. She rarely saw her children or friends, but instead, she spent hours every day talking to them on the telephone. Moreover, she claimed that she was writing an autobiography based on her life experiences at the time. Throughout her life, Hetty had complicated feelings about the beautiful face she had. Her unparalleled beauty was the inspiration for two immortal cartoon characters, Snow White and Catwoman. And at the height of the plastic surgery craze in the 1940s, her profile was one of the most requested by patients, more than any other. While she often claimed that outward appearances did not matter to her, she eventually became a repeat plastic surgery patient herself in her later years. There was no way she could bear to see her beauty fade away. This beauty is beautifully depicted in a new acquisition at the Smithsonian's National Portrait Gallery, which represents a tribute to the actress and is captured in an elegant manner. This Italian poster was designed for her World War II film, The Conspirators, which was made during the height of the Second World War. In this image, you can see the allure that resulted in her being referred to as the most beautiful woman in the world. The actor finally received acknowledgement for her achievements off-screen years after she retired and retreated from the spotlight. Three years before her death, Lamar and Antile were jointly awarded the Pioneer Award by the Electronic Frontier Foundation, and Lamar became the first woman to receive the Bulby Nass Spirit of Achievement Award by the Invention Convention. Her invention got her into the National Inventors Hall of Fame posthumously in 2014. After hearing about the award, she told her son, it's about time. Perhaps it makes sense that it's taken so long for the patriarchal society to deal with Lamar's entire story, an extraordinary, beautiful, troubled, brilliant, sexually liberated woman has long been too much for them. It's something Lamar seemed to get. Merv Griffin was befuddled by her explanation in a 1969 interview. I'm a very simple, very complicated person. Her films and the belated recognition of her contributions to technology have made her legacy live on. In the documentary, Bombshell, director Alexandra Dean reveals that she was much more than a silver screen star. When I first listened to her voice on tape, I was blown away by her sense of humor, Dean says. She's so funny and quirky. Her first line on the tape was, I think I can control people after I die. Sometimes I think she meant to scare anyone who listened to the tape and was telling her story. I was just thrilled by that idea. She also said she knew what she'd done, and she didn't need anyone to believe her. Isn't it inspiring to hear her say that she could recognize her achievements on her own? She didn't need anyone else's approval. Yeah, that's cool. When Lamar passed away in January 2000, she was 85 years old, yet even at that time, she was still inventing things. A fluorescent dog collar, modification for the supersonic Concorde airliner, and a new kind of stoplight. Her son, Anthony Loader, described her as a person who would love to be remembered for having contributed to the well-being of humankind through the legacy of her frequency hopping concept. Today, it is amazing to consider that almost everyone on this planet is connected to the Internet using a communication system that is directly connected to Hedy Lamar's invention in some way. Every day, we interact with something that came from the brilliant mind of that beautiful woman. Hetty's story goes beyond her invention, though. A woman with tremendous natural talent had it all in terms of beauty, brains, of course, and courage. Still, 
she couldn't really command real authority or respect for her accomplishments. How does that affect us? Do actresses just have to be attributed with beauty and romance to be powerful and interesting? That's really disturbing. Wouldn't it be great to reevaluate historical women's roles as thinkers and game changers instead of thinking that they were only driven by romance, appearance, and children? Share your thoughts in the comments. It's rare that a Hollywood actress can offer more than just her beauty. Shirley Temple, Secret Behind Her Smile. Watch this video.